Back to our top story now. Blue Scope Steel's half-year net loss is more than $500 million. But Managing Director and CEO Paul O'Malley says 2012 is a turning point for the steelmaker. I spoke to him a short time ago. Paul O'Malley, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Well, big red numbers, uh, as the market expected, I think. Uh, have you broken the back of this restructuring now, and especially in terms of any further job losses, I guess? Yeah, we think that we've made the decisions we needed to last year to exit the loss-making export business, and we've now laid the foundation for a return to profitability. And I think the market was pleased with, with where we've landed at the half year. You talked a lot about, you used this phrase, the cumulative cost of doing business. What are your biggest concerns here on the cost front? Uh, in Australia, um, certainly with the high Australian dollar, mm. um, you have a handbrake on your business, and particularly our smaller customers who are competing with imports. There's a lot of regulation, there's a lot of rule that um, doesn't necessarily add value to doing business in Australia. Let me pick, pick that apart a little bit. Um, your assumptions about the Australian dollar first, um, what, what are they, that, those assumptions, that will take you back to your, your underlying profit later this year? Oh, look, we expect the Aussie dollar to stay high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one listens to all of the experts. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't always get it right. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to assume. We do know that raw material costs are falling and steel prices are reasonably flat. So, so that's a positive. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we have taken significant costs out of our business and we are reducing dramatically our, ex our export sales. Both those things will help us move to a positive run rate by the fourth quarter. Now, you had a tough time last year, obviously with the, the, the loss of a thousand jobs at Port Kembla and, uh, and subsequently you were attacked for the three million dollar uh, payment to senior execs. The board defended it and I, I think one director said that you'd lost nearly a dozen key managers under the executive leadership team in recent times, largely to resource companies. Has this sort of hemorrhaging stopped now? Look, it is no doubt that as a company we have tremendously talented executives and people. Um, you have to pay a competitive salary to those people because they can pick up and go wherever they want. Particularly at the moment. Absolutely. And when you're in manufacturing where the sector's not as, uh, as glamorous perhaps as mining is today, you've got to actually ensure those people feel good about their jobs and are well paid. And uh, from, a, from a board perspective, if you don't pay good people well, they go elsewhere. I think it's in the shareholders' interests to ensure we keep talented managers within the business. You cannot go through a restructure that we've just gone through safely, on time, delivering the results we said we would without having good people. Uh, so it's important to pay them well. You've now got uh, a dialogue going uh, with, with workers uh, at, at Wollongong, uh, another enterprise bargaining agreement. Is the Fair Work Act doing its thing? Is it flexible enough for you? Look, I think, um, I think that there are some uh, presumptions in the Fair, Fair Work Act uh, that are perhaps not helpful. I think we were not a company that ever used individual contracts. We've always worked within a framework of collective awards or, um, uh, or, or uh, broader agreements. Um, so they've worked for us in the past. I expect they will in the future. Our employees know that we're going through a really tough time. Our employees know that it's in their interests to be aligned with management, to get our costs down, be productive, because we don't have the flexibility not to do that. So are you looking for, the, for, for flexibility, which you're finding quite difficult to, to argue for under the current uh, legislation? Oh, look, we were able to restructure our operations in Australia uh, over the past six months with all the flexibility necessary and with the support of our employees. That has not been constrained. But there are some presumptions in the Fair Work Act that actually get between employers and their employees which aren't necessarily in the best interests of a company or Australia as a productive place to work. But we have not been constrained in doing what we needed to do with the support of our employees and I think that's worth acknowledging. Now, Kevin Rudd is, uh, seems to be doing his best to stir the possum uh, in, in the last few days. Um, the uncertainty over the, the, the Labor leadership at the moment, is that likely to affect policy towards business or, or is it just a confidence issue, do you think? We know that our customers, when they're more confident, are prepared to step out, spend a little more and stimulate the economy. I think people are concerned about the stability uh, of leadership um, you know, more broadly, interest rates. Um, we need, I think, to have a unanimity of purpose that Australia needs leadership. Um, and the sooner we kind of get that sorted and move on, I think the better for the economy. Mm -hmm.
Finally, looking forward, uh, very much for you, I think the future is Asia. Um, I think you've got a $60 million in investment uh, there now. Uh, it's growing in importance, even though presumably there's quite a lot of competition up there. Oh, look, um, it's incredibly competitive. In, and in China, it's one of the most competitive marketplaces in the world. Uh, we have a long history of investing in Asia. I think as an Australian company, we've been at the forefront of that investment. We're probably the largest Australian manufacturing investor in Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia and China. And a few years ago, we had a bit of hard work to do to make sure that those investments were successful. But we are absolutely seeing positive returns from those investments. And look, it's wonderful being part of a large, growing, vibrant economy with Australian technology and ingenuity as the basis of that. It's a really good mix. Paul O'Malley, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.